like a good day for planting. I can't always count on the sun or the rain either for that matter. I can't even count on myself alone. But I did learn that as a group, soybean farmers can work together to create new opportunities for this business. I've seen how our commodity organization can accomplish a lot of what I can't do by myself. That European trade mission I was on with the American Soybean Association showed me that. Together, we can make a difference. One of the things I learned on the trip was how dependent we are on the export market. 50% of this crop I'm planting will go overseas. That's every other row. My European trip has convinced me that exports are the only way to go. And it's the Soybean Association that's working to develop those markets. Without those markets, I'd be out of business. Port at Rotterdam. It's the world's largest port. I see why they call it the doorway to Western Europe. Denny Blankenship is the Western European director for ASA. He started my European trip with a boat tour of the Europort. I saw a very efficient water transportation system. Denny explained how important it is for our European soybean exports. From here in Rotterdam, it's especially important for grains and commodities like soybeans and soybean meal that we have a very efficient handling system where we can offload vessels into barges for soybean meal moving directly down the Rhine River into Central Europe as we see here. By working with the Dutch traders and the Dutch industry crushers and the Port Authority, we have a very efficient and economical system of moving huge volumes of soybeans and soybean meal into the European markets. Then he told me he grew up on an Iowa farm. <laughs> he's sure a long way from home now, but he's still working for us. It's great to know we've got people with farm roots representing us in Europe. I'm convinced he knows what we need and has our interests at heart. Much of the market development effort that Denny is working on is really an investment in future growth. Sometimes change comes pretty slowly. But it's nice to know that Dave may someday profit from what Denny is working on right now. Denny is over there planting seeds. Seeds that will develop into new and bigger markets in the future. Of course, there are many immediate results of his work, too. Jim, there are many phases to our market development program in Europe where we're trying to generally increase the consumption of soybeans, soybean meal and soybean oil throughout the market. We work with retail stores in promoting soybean oil, trying to raise the image of the product so the consumer has a greater appreciation and awareness uh, for soy oil. Denny introduced me to Dr. Roger Lyson, ASA's European oil specialist. What we want to achieve is uh, inform the consumer what soybean oil is. The first step, therefore, is an identified soybean oil. You look great in that dressing. Yes. They showed me a British TV commercial promoting soy oil. We have very active programs in the United Kingdom and Italy where we're doing consumer promotions to identify soybean oil through a soya sign. It's your seal of quality. Pure soya oil, the versatile way to good food. We also work with the Dutch organization TNO to find new uses for soybean oil through joint efforts and research for future market expansion of the product. 
Mr. Wiseman, could you tell us uh, what research you're doing on soybeans right now at the Institute? Yes, well, we are uh, conducting uh, research in the oil and fats uh, sector. We do this with this type of uh, instruments that are instruments on pilot uh, plant scale. We work closely with the Foreign Agricultural Service and the agricultural counselors in, pr in promoting uh, good understanding of trade policy issues and to do technical servicing work to the crushing industry and to the feed manufacturers and the end users of soybean products so that they're more efficient in their use of soybeans. They make money and in turn they're going to buy more soybeans from American soybean farmers. This is really what our market development effort is all about here in Europe. Then he took me to one of the large soybean processing plants in the Netherlands. There he introduced me to Simon Oosterman, Cargill's manager in Amsterdam. Simon, could you tell us uh, what Cargill is doing with uh, soybeans here at your plant? Yes, this is a, uh, a pretty big plant. We do about uh, 35 million bushels of soybeans uh, in this plant. And so you can imagine how important it is for us to have a constant supply of good quality beans. We provide refined oils for the oil industry, the margarine industry, and we provide uh, soy flours and textured vegetable proteins to uh, the human food industry. We provide these products all over Northwestern Europe, from the United Kingdom to Germany to Northern France and Belgium. Why don't you put that up on my okay. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jeff. Thought you were out planting some of your international soybeans this morning, Jim. I was planting my beans, but I broke my drive chain on my planter and had to come in for a new one. How are you fixed for one of those, Clyde? I think I'll still get my beans in before the rain. You still talking to us ordinary people? We haven't been to Europe, you know, only English is spoken here. <laughs> you don't have to speak anything but English and you don't have to go to Europe. That's the whole point. You've got hired hands overseas speaking a lot of different languages for your benefit, Jack. Thanks to the Soybean Association, we're all part of an international partnership. They really sold you a bill of goods, huh? You don't know how many people there are in the international partnership working full time for your benefit, Jack. Part of that checkoff money of ours is invested in overseas promotion. The amount you pay individually is about the price of a cup of coffee per acre. But together, though, it means that lots of good people are working to promote soybeans. Let me tell you about a few that I met. So Denny Blankenship was my guide at the beginning of my tour. He explained to me our promotional efforts to increase the demand for our products. And he showed me how international politics work at the Hague. Now let's go in the embassy and meet uh, Bud Anderson, our agricultural counselor, and talk with him about how we work together in building these markets. Jim, I'd like for you to meet Bud Anderson, our agricultural counselor here in the Netherlands. Bud, would you tell Jim how we work together to increase the exports of uh, soybeans and soybean products into the European community? Well, Jim, we work very closely with the American Soybean Association and their market development plan and, and promotion here in Europe. Uh, we also keep abreast of what's going on in the trade policy area as it affects the European common market, as it affects our soybeans, as it affects our agricultural exports in general. We have to ensure that we maintain a zero duty binding for our soybeans. It's going to be tough to stay in this market and we need to work very closely together uh, with Denny and ASA to uh, keep this market open for American soybeans. They really gave you the royal treatment. They're working for us, Jack. There's no way we can make those kinds of connections on our own. And we're dependent on the International Organization of the Soybean Association. Working with the government is important in Holland, but good connections are even more crucial for us in Eastern Europe. Let me tell you what I found in Yugoslavia. Some aspects of agriculture in Yugoslavia haven't changed much in centuries. In many areas, they are modernizing, and ASA is able to provide technical assistance. Tom Brennan is our ASA director in Eastern Europe. Jim, today we're going to visit a feed mill in Yugoslavia, which, as you can see, is going through a great deal of modernization. The mills here have, are all attempting to modernize to improve the efficiency of feed production and, eventually, the efficiency of livestock production. Jim, I'd like you to meet Mr. Peter Delage. 
Mr. Delic is the executive director of the Yugoslavian Feed Manufacturers Association in Zagreb. Yugoslavia produces momentarily about 4.5 million tons. Yugoslavia produces 4.5 million tons of feed for cattle. We have to import about 40 percent of our needs, which is done regularly every year. The imports are absolutely free of government restrictions. However, the organization wanting to import needs to make the proper payment arrangements and needs to have earned sufficient foreign currency, and they need to inform a committee for import of foreign cattle feed. Our field space is small, and we are allowed to sow only 20 percent of all the crops for cattle feed. This means that we will need to import for a long time. Jim, right now, Eastern Europe uses a lot of beans and meal already, about 175 million bushels per year. But U.S. market share is only 25 percent, or about 40 million bushels, because of government trade policies and monetary problems here in the region. We're trying to overcome those obstacles. And if we can, we can sell over 300 million bushels of beans right here. And that's one out of every 10 row that you grow. Let's go over and visit a swine farm and see how they use some of the soybean meal. Not all of Eastern Europe is in the dark ages when it comes to agricultural technology, Jim. Many of the farms are quite advanced and quite modern. Take, for example, this one unit we're visiting in Yugoslavia, where they produce over 90,000 hogs per year. But at the same time, ASA is able to come in here and help them solve waste management problems and to look at biogas production. In other areas of Eastern Europe, we go in and deal with more basic research and more basic technology. We're helping them with feed formulation and general management. By helping these countries imp improve the efficiency of production, we're going to sell more beans to them. How mechanized are their farms, Jim? Yeah, I'll bet they're heavy into computerized livestock <laughs> breeding, huh? Not so much. You have to remember, they're not nearly so mechanized as we are. Let me tell you about another place that's come a long way in a short time. Agriculture in Morocco is still very labor-intensive. The delivery and marketing systems are fairly simple. Still, there are some operations that are quite progressive. I saw a poultry farm in Morocco that was run a lot like the swine operation in Yugoslavia. Dr. Larry Beauregard, the ASA director from Madrid, is able to relate really well with local customers like those at the poultry farm. La croissance est bonne dans l'ensemble, mais cela est dû un peu à la conception des bâtiments et de la ventilation que vous voyez. Jim, I'm here with some technical people from Provimi, which is a feed manufacturing operation. My job is to provide technology transfer from the United States in case I can identify something where we can help. These technical people do a better job. The more we help, the more profitable this operation is, the more this farmer here will feed his chickens, and the more soybeans you, Jim, will sell to Morocco. Here's your chain, Jim. Yeah, thanks, Clyde. With the Soybean Association expanding market opportunities for our beans overseas, we better get back to the planting. See you later, Clyde. See you. We're on to the beginning of a gigantic partnership. We farmers need the Soybean Association to help create new markets. You know, we need grain companies, barge lines, railroads, and other types of agribusinesses to transport, process, and finance those sales. Our partnership includes people everywhere who are as dependent on our beans as we are on their markets. You know, Jim, you might have something there. Good to see you, Jack. So long. I think I made my point with them about the partnership. I can grow these beans, but no matter how hard I work or how good a yield I get, our markets have to keep on growing too. Every other row depends on it. That's why we need the Soybean Association. <laughs>